let's talk two names that I believe the Pittsburgh Steelers have on their roster that could be, I don't know, big time contributors in 2024. I don't want to say starters. I don't want to say superstars. I just think can take a step forward, a pretty significant step forward, make an impact, become pretty big names, you know? And if you're a diehard fan, like if you're a guy who is sitting around and you you are into the, hey, this is the big time backup, these, these are the guys, these are the two names that I feel very, very confident in, to be honest with you. And I would say one of them has starter potential, but just because of the other veteran on the roster, I don't believe he's a starter. The other one I don't think is a starter, but I think he's as good of a number two as the Steelers want. <laughs> Let's start with the lesser of the two, the lower name. That is defensive tackle Isaiah Loudermilk. People are going to say, what? What? Isaiah's done nothing. He's a run stuffer. Isaiah looks big. He looks, and that's hard to do when you're six, seven. Like it, it's hard to look bigger than you are. Isaiah looks bigger. He looks leaner. He looks faster. I think he's a dude that last year took a pretty big step forward late in the season. And this year is kind of coming into his own, I feel. I feel this is the year that Isaiah Loudermilk came into the NFL and had a lot of development. He he was raw. He was a positionless. The Steelers didn't know if they were going to play him on the outside or the inside. He had to learn to play on the inside. He had most of his experience at Wisconsin kind of played that defensive end role, bounced inside to play more of a, a, a gap role, and at times even stuck himself right in the middle of a defensive line. I think he's big enough to do all that. I think that the Pittsburgh Steelers are going to find themselves in a position where they're trying to rotate as many guys in here as possible on that defensive line to keep guys healthy, to keep their older veterans calm and and ready to go later in the season. And I think Isaiah Loudermilk's a dude who's going to make some noise. He's got to develop as a pass rusher. But to be honest, you had guys like Tyson Alawalu for years who was a run stuffer, who was that's who he was. And crazy enough, Tyson Alawalu came into the league as a pass rusher and developed into a really, pretty stern run stuffer. I think uh, I think Isaiah Loudermilk has that potential. I think Isaiah Loudermilk, this is a year where Isaiah Loudermilk can make some noise. The only reason I'm not going into the, I think he could be a starter, is because I think if anybody's going to replace Larry Ogunjobi on the starting lineup this season, it's going to be Dean Lowry. And I think that that's an easy one because Dean Lowry has plenty of starting experience in the NFL, has been a reliable guy for all of his career. And if he didn't deal with an injury, I think he would have signed somewhere where he probably would have started. So I look at Dean Lowry as the, if the Steelers are going to make a change on the defensive line at any point during the season, Dean Lowry's option one, then it's Isaiah Loudermilk. My other name here, backup tight end Darnell Washington. People are getting excited about this kid. I'm excited about this kid. I'm not ready to deem him a superstar. I'm just saying that I think Darnell Washington is going to really take a step forward in year two. I have a ton of faith in Alfredo Roberts, their tight end coach. I think he's phenomenal. I think Arthur Smith knows how to utilize tight ends and utilize big bodies. Darnell Washington is as big and as physical as they come. And I think that he's got an opportunity to really be that guy. You know, last year it was him, Connor Hayward, Rodney Williams was getting a little bit of love in there. There was kind of mix and match in tight ends. This year it's Pat Fryermuth, Darnell Washington, and that's probably going to be it. You're going to see some Connor Hayward playing the slot and being a utility piece, but as a tight end, I think those two really solidify their role. I'm excited for what I've seen in Darnell Washington to this point. I think he's going to catch a little bit more passes. I think he's going to score a lot of touchdowns this year. He's a fantasy. If you're looking for a vulture, he's a dude. I got big hopes for Darnell Washington. Um, I know Isaiah is a little bit out there. What do you think on uh, these two names here? I definitely like the Darnell Washington one. I think that he's going to be huge in the red zone this year, simply because, I mean, even yesterday we talked about, well, what if they use Justin Fields in those packages? But even if they use right. Russell Wilson and they just they ignore the Justin Fields of it all, you have running backs like Najee Harris and Jalen Warren who can run it down your throat from five yards out, and you have Darnell Washington who can be that versatile guy because you know they can run the ball on you, and Darnell Washington is a some people have already said, is another tackle. So you know he's going to be a good blocker. Or if you sell out for the run, he's a huge target. He's a guy that was used in that role very well at Georgia. They didn't use him a lot last year, but they didn't use tight ends a lot last year. Like you mentioned, Arthur Smith loves to use tight ends, especially in the red zone. You look at all the tight end touchdowns that were down there in Atlanta, that's what's coming to Pittsburgh. And I think Darnell Washington is going to benefit 
a lot from it. So I'll, I love the Darnell Washington of it all. The Isaiah Loudermilk, I just, it's weird. You know, I, I see where you're going with it, but there's just so many names on that defensive line that I, I think that if they do end up using that rotation, like you mentioned, yeah, I yep. could see that that becomes a role in which Isaiah Loudermilk is looked at as, oh, he's having a much better season than he's had in the past because he's going to be much more visible. He's going to get many more snaps. But I think that as far as the hierarchy goes on that defensive line, I still think that he's behind the eight ball when it comes to some of the other names that are out there. Who do you think is ahead of him? Can I ask that question? Position wise, I think that obviously you mentioned Dean Lowry. I think that, yes. you know, Keanu Benton is going to have a lot more playing time. So yeah, I, yeah. I think that he's also going to probably take away from opportunities for Isaiah Loudermilk, but also, you know, you still have Cam out there who's going to be, you know, you might want to take him off the field, but after last year, are you going to be able to take him off the field if he's healthy this year? You know, you saw what happened whenever Cam was off the field last year to the Steelers run defense. You're going to need guys like that. And I understand that's louder milk's bread and butter. But I think at the same time, whenever you're looking at a team that's going to be facing, you know, a lot of really solid run offenses, you're going to want your best of your best out there. And I think that, you know, that's going to be part of where these other guys are in front of him. So I agree with that. I, I agree that Keanu, Keanu Benton's a starter, you know, and he's mm -hmm. a stud and then you play Keanu Benton. I think the longer the season goes on, the more the Steelers are going to realize that I, Isaiah Loudermilk is a better run stuffer than most of their options. And that when you're play, playing guys like Lamar Jackson and Nick Chubb and Cincinnati doesn't really even have a running back. So let's not no. let's not toss Cincinnati out there. Zach Moss, man, shout out. Hope you do your best. But let's be realistic <laughs> about the situation. If the Steelers find themselves against a lot of running teams, which they probably will this season, mm -hmm. then louder milk is a big is a big addition and so is dean lowry but i think louder milk's gonna play it's gonna be like the marcus golden last year where marcus golden sat a couple of games and demarvin leal sat a couple of, couple of games because you just faced run heavy teams and i think that the steelers are gonna find themselves this year and i think that's where isaiah louder milk's gonna be like this is where i shine man this is where i come into play and this is where i make an impact he's gonna surpass montrevious adams he's gonna surpass I, I want to say at one point he might surpass Larry O. Like, I'm just, this is a shot in the dark. It's early, but I don't know, man. I think I got a lot of potential in this kid. From what I've heard from his trainers and from other players who kind of work with him, he has really taken a step forward this offseason. I'm just excited to see what he brings, you know? And, and again, it's too early to start making predictions of where he falls on the depth chart, but I think it's going to be a lot higher than uh, than people think, and I think his impact's going to be a lot bigger. And he's definitely going to be ahead of DeMarvin Leal. Like, there's, you know, he's already surpassed DeMarvin Leal and he'll remain ahead of DeMarvin Leal. If Dean Lowry wasn't around, I think uh, I, I think he's the number two and and has a real shot to really make a significant impact. But I still think he he makes a big one. But again, it's early and we'll dive into it.